بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم نحمده ونصلي على رسول الكريم أما بعد 17th of Ramadan was the occasion where Battle of Badr took place it was the same time where Nabi alayhi salatu was salam made a fesla in the asmans in the heavens in tuhlik adhihi al-isaba min ahli al-islam Allah if this jamaat gets destroyed for la tu'bad fi al-ardi abada your worship will not take place on the earth. So we need to learn as well from the lesson of Badr that to take decisions, no matter what, as a bar, plotting, planning, the Jal, the people of the dunya, Ahle Batil are going to do. Allah has given us the keys to the treasures of the earth, dunya and akhirat. It is up to us to use it. Likewise, it is Ramadan. It's not a time of gluttony and overeating. Eat as much as we can, iftar time, seri time, etc. After tarawih. No. If we're not going to control our nafs and our eating habits now, when will we ever learn this? When this is the mawaqi, the opportunities to tame the suruh, this is the time. Continue with our signs. La taqumu sa'atu number 10. Qiyamah will not come hatta taraw umuran idhaman. You will see great occurrences. Lam takunu tarawnaha. You never seen and never fathomed like this before. Wa la tuhadithuna biha anfusakum. Your minds could not even believe such a thing would happen. Fa idha raitum thalika. When you would see this, fadhukur Allah ta'ala. Then remember Allah. Turn to Allah. When you see all these signs, turn to amal, turn to ibadah. It means you already in ibadah, but now start increasing. Wa alamu annaha awayul sa'ah. And get ready for Qiyamah. First meaning modern day inventions. Whether it's planes, whether it's trains, whether it is whatever else it is that we are seeing today. Um, these are all inventions which we cannot believe and fathom. And you can run your mind to it of what inventions. Secondly, in the medical field, and I'm just going to ta target one aspect, genetic engineering or gene modification, gene manipulation where they take your genes, your chromosomes, etc. and they splice it, gene splicing, gene dicing. Uh, and the research there is to do interspecies crossing, to do cloning, etc. where man plays God. And Dajjal will also play God. He will bring the dead alive. And those that are alive, he can make them dead. So these researchers, these labs, and now currently they are secret labs, that are taking dominant chromosomes, genes of species, and they're trying to feed them into the human life pool. So they want to make a superhuman, whether strength-wise, stamina-wise, healing-wise, mind-wise, etc. Then going to the other field of crops, vegetation, etc. Where they should grow bigger, where they should be virus-resistant, insect-resistant, no need for pesticides. The Dajjal, where crops cannot grow, or a crop should be destroyed, he will give you gardens, he will show you gardens. And they will give you this opportunity now, here's this thing, use it. This is your salvation, we'll give it to you, we'll give you plantations, we'll give you the solutions to all your problems. But actually if a person accepts that, then he's accepting hell and Jahannam. Likewise in the world, they've, they've, they've done the world's first gene-edited babies have been born. Although it technically it's illegal and shouldn't be done, but what's done behind doors, behind closed doors, only Allah knows. Then another aspect, let's think about this cloud seeding, where we increase uh, rainfall, artificial precipitation, artificial precipitation. So it's a method where rainfall is increased. If we're looking at uh, 2008 Olympics, China used it so that to deter rain from the Beijing Olympics. 2016, 56 countries using cloud seeding. UAE announced its program called the RAP. What's it for? Restoration of Rain Enhancement Science. So, everywhere in the world, now recently they're using drones to alter the electric, electronic properties by inducing electricity, or it's called electrical seeding. Then they have technology manipulation where you can alter weather patterns, Tesla ELF transmitters, or the HARP high frequency research program, which is in Alaska, etc. 
So all of these things which we cannot even fathom or it will boggle our mind and connected to that is La Taqumu Sa'a, number 11 Hatta Ta'ud Ardul Arab that you will see the Arabian Peninsula Murujan, it will become meadows, partial lands it will be covered with grass and greenery one haro, and you will see rivers and streams flowing look at the meadows, if you look at the uh, data from NASA Saudi Arabia and the Middle East if they've taken pictures 20 years ago and now there's an increase in, in, in the greenery and they say more than drilling oil there's a more precious commodity which they will be drilling is water satellite images show fields of greenery springing up and they say there's trapped and hidden reserves which now they can uh, grow crops likewise uh, satellite imagery showing that there's approximately 10,000 lakes which crisscross Saudi Arabia. Uh, they've, they've employed 40 institutions to do research over this. And they say over the last 20 years, the Middle East is becoming meadows. So we have meadows, we have greenery. Likewise, number 12, that mountains will be moved, first meaning physical movement, where there is seismic movement in the earth, etc. Or oh, number two, whether these mountains will be moved where we make roads, where we make highways, where we make tunnels for rail, etc. So tunnels in the mountains. Uh, just one tunnel which has been created now recently in uh, Swiss cities, workers have bought around 160 kilometers of tunnels. That's a length of around 50, 60, 57 kilometers long at the cost of $10.3 billion. Then number three, we don't even need to look far. When we go to the Haram, they're already moving mountains. Look at Dubai, the Middle East. For the Palm Project, which many people have seen and it's renowned, 7 million tons of rock was blasted from the Hajar mountain. If that rock was gathered, they'll able to build a wall two meters wide, which would cover the earth, the globe three times. In China, in a city uh, which is Lanzhou, China, they move in uh, a great amount of mountains because there's a shortage of land. The city is moving out. There's a shortage of land. So for the next 10 years, they put a budget of $16 billion to move that mountain. And number four, mountains will move. Ice caps are melting. NASA says average of 1% per annum, the ice caps are uh, melting. Since 1960, the thickness of the Arctic ice has decreased by 40%. Their forecast by 2040, if the global temperature rises, at a rate that at currently what it is melting and uh, the level of water rising by 2040 the arctic ice would have melted means all the mountains in the arctic would have disappeared what my nabi has said mountains will move the antarctica and south pole has 90 percent of the world's ice it extends to approximately 14 million square kilometers. That's the size of US and Mexico combined. If we just look at one area, which is called the Ward Hunt Ice Shelf, which is the single largest block of ice in the Arctic. Since the year 2000, it's been, scientists obviously, that is their research, their ilm, etc. And we're going by what they say, but Allah knows best. Since the year 2000, it started melting and they found cracks. And now currently, as we speak, it's breaking into little pieces. Number 13. That the earth will shrink, the earth will contract. Meaning number one, Again, and connected to the previous topic, new inventions of travel, rockets, planes, cars, etc. So the earth has shrunk now. Second meaning, the earth will shrink through technology now. I can have a conference of people on every continent and I can see them in real time. So the earth has shrunk. 
Likewise, we can ponder and think about the different inventions out there. Then look at the future. Supersonic jets. By 2025, they expect that transport air travel will be around the speed of 2.2 mark. One mark is a speed of sound, which is 1,235 kilometers. If we calculate it, plus minus 2,700 kilometers per hour. We can almost literally go to Cape Town and back in an hour. Then we have uh, uh, airless tubes, which in 2017 they've started, where people will get into the tubes and travel. Then we have the Hyperloop travel by 2021 uh, at a speed of 1,100 kilometers an hour. Then we have PAV, personal air vehicles where cars, vehicles, human beings will travel in the air. The earth will shrink and contract. Likewise, autonomous vehicles, the list is end endless. Nabi alayhi salam has warned us of all these inventions. The Jal will travel the earth quickly. He will cover a great area. All this technology is a preparation. Nabi alayhi salam said, that Fadhkurullah engage more in ibadat, engage more in ibadat and amal, realize your object, understand your focus, understand the reason why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has sent you into this world. Do you think we have created you? Do you think we have not created you for a purpose? Definitely Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has created us for a purpose and we need to realize this purpose and objective. There were three friends traveling, they came to their apartment, penthouse was on the 100th floor, ground floor, no power, no electricity. They made Mashraj said, how do we solve this problem? We'll have to climb the steps to compensate for this difficulty. Let's teach, tell each other a story, an incident, a narrative. So they, the first one started, they climbed 25 floors. After reaching the 25th floor, the, uh, he got tired. And he said, that's my story. They said, very boring. We fell the 25 floors. Second one started 30, 35, 40, 45, 50, 55, 60. He finished his story. They said, hey, you know what? Your stories are boring. We felt 60 floors. We felt 60 floors. The last one said, I will tell you my story. 65, I got a very interesting story. You know, if you had to hear my story, you've never heard a story like this in your life. 70, 75, 80, 85, 90, 95, 100. When they reached the 100 floor, the friend stopped and said, Hazrat, stop. You're saying you got a, such a story, such a nice story. You've never heard a story like this. I've got such an interesting story. Stories have been told before in the past, but nobody has heard a story like this. We heard every floor, we heard the same thing. You never started the story. We're not going into our apartment until you don't tell us what's the story. So he said, unfortunately, my story is when we were on the ground floor, I left the key on the table. I forgot to take it when we were discussing what to do. I forgot the keys on the ground floor. It should not be that on the day of Qiyamah we come in front of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We got all the stories of dunya and our accomplishments of dunya, but we haven't realized and focused on finding Allah and His Rasul the real key to Akhirat. The difference is those people could have went back ground floor and went back up. We cannot go back into Akhirat. So now is the month, now is the time, now is an opportunity. Let us see how we can increase in Ibadat and A'mal. The dua for today is to read Subhanallah wa bihamdihi Subhanallah al -Azim. It is very light on the tongue, heavy on the scales, beloved to Allah. The famous hadith in Bukhari, which Imam Bukhari had conclu concluded, and we hear it in the Bukhari Khatams. Let's see, I've heard it so many times in my life. If I've heard it so many times in my life, until today I haven't practiced, then when am I going to practice? Whoever says this hundred times, لَمْ يَأْتِي أَحَدٌ يَوْمَ الْقِيَامَ بِأَفْضَلَ مِمَّا جَاء بِهِ Nobody will come higher stages in Akhirat than somebody who has matched him. أو زاد عليه أو has increased نظر يوائد غفرت له ذنوبه وإن كانت أكثر من زبد البحر Your sins will be forgiven even if it's more than the foams in the ocean 
another riwayat. Whoever says this hundred times, فَإِنَّهَا أَلْفُ hasana, He will get a hundred rewards. And another riwayat, whoever says this, أَلْفَ marra, A thousand times. فَقَدْ اشْتَرَى نَفْسَهُ مِنَ اللَّهِ Then he's done a deal with Allah. وَكَانَ آخِرَ يَوْمِ أَتِيقَ اللَّهِ by the end of the day, he will have secured emancipation from the fire of Jahannam. So at least minimum, 100 times in the morning, 100 times in the evening, Subhanallah wa bihamdihi, Subhanallah al -Azim. And the amal for today and continued before and we are encouraging this is tahajjud. We've got Sari, we are awake, let us make a niyat till I die, I will never miss tahajjud. They say in Jannah, People will be given a special horse which they will fly, which will be made of gold, studded with rubies and emeralds. The people of the lower Jannah will say, Ya Rabbi, bima kullaha. How have they reached such high stages and virtues? It will be told to them, Kanu yusalluna bil wa kuntum tanamuna. They used to be awake at night while you were asleep. وَكَانُوا يَسُومُونَ وَكُنْتُمْ تَأْكُلُونَ While they used to fast, you used to feast. وَكَانُوا يُقَاتِلُونَ وَكُنْتُمْ تَجْبُنُونَ They used to strive in the path of Allah and they were ready to give their lives. You were too coward to even leave your house for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Nabi alayhi salam made dua for the people. رَحِمَ اللَّهُ رَجُلًا Allah have mercy. May Allah special mercy descend on the person who gets up at night and he wakes his wife up as well. Man min al-layl wa qayqada ahlahu and they both read together tahajjud. Kutiba min al-dhaakirin Allah kathira wa al-dhaakirat. They will be written in the category of those people who are classified as those that remembered Allah excessively. Akrabu ma yakunu the closest a person will be to his Rabb fi jawfil layl lil akhir in the last part of the night. فَإِنْ إِسْتَطَعْتَ أَنْ تَكُونَ مِمَّنْ يَذْكُرِ اللَّهِ فِي تِلْكَ السَّاعَةِ فَكُنْ If Allah gives you tawfiq to be amongst those special few, then make sure you are amongst them. وَآخِرُ تَعْوَانَا أَنِ الْحَمْدُ لِلَّهِ رَبِّ الْعَالَمِينَ